Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be answering a question I get constantly and the reason I've never made a video like this is because what you see here changes uh, relatively frequently for me. So uh, folks are always asking me what my EDC is. Um, so we're going to go over what it is as of today. Today is December 23rd, 2018 as I'm filming this. Um, so uh, there are some changes I have planned already uh, to this. They're just not quite there yet and we'll get into that uh, as we go along. So the guns that you see here on the table, all of these are loaded and they are currently in my concealed carry rotation. So uh, I guess we'll touch on that topic first. Why do I have a concealed carry rotation instead of one gun? Um, I'm a believer that you should always be carrying a gun and uh, I follow that as much as possible. Unless there's a place where there is a law enforcement officer scanning and actually present there to arrest me if I'm carrying a gun uh, unlawfully, I will be carrying a gun. Uh, anybody who ever comes up to me, any of you viewers, feel free to ask. I'll tell you, I'll show you. Uh, I don't care. I'm always, always, always carrying a gun. So uh, with that, I have different choices for me because I don't dress to conceal carry, if that makes sense. I just dress how I dress and then I conceal carry. Um, and I know a lot of people out there on the internet will tell you that they always carry a gun. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that's 100% not true and people lie about that and I don't know why. Um, but you know, I've gone to many events of people who do what I do uh, in terms of running uh, YouTube gun channels and more often than not, most people there aren't carrying a gun. Um, that happens constantly because I, I bring the topic up, but what are you carrying? Oh, I'm not today because we're at this event. Like you're just, you're not gonna see that with me. Again, unless there's like a law enforcement person there who's going to arrest me for carrying, I will be carrying. Um, <laughs> just count on it. Uh, but of course we wanna be concealed as well. So there is that. So I guess we'll just kind of go this way just to keep some order to it. Uh, what we have here is a Gen 1 Shield 9. Um, this is a DeSantis um, a holster that has a thumb lock on it. So it has a retention. It's OWB rig. Uh, shield 9mm, what do I have for ammo in there? We have gold dot 124 green ammo, and uh, it's a good rig. One thing I really like about it, I should also mention I do have uh, Ameriglow eye dots on there. And uh, it's a good rig. What I like this for is actually winter carry, which doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Um, but when I'm wearing something like this, uh, which is like a hooded sweatshirt or even a jacket, I almost never wear jackets unless I'm at the range actually, because I'm never really outside. Uh, long enough for it to be cold as a civilian. <laughs> um, but I like this uh, because I can wear this outside the waistband, uh, have eight rounds of nine millimeter and have retention as well. Anytime I carry anything outside the waistband in public, and actually I don't have any other ones here, um, even if it's concealed, I still have retention on it. I just think the likelihood of a gun grab goes up exponentially um, if you have an outside the waistband rig. My personal opinion, you guys can disagree with that, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I also have some sort of retention device for it, if that's the case. Um, I also carry a Glock 19 and a DeSantis, uh, or rather a, uh, uh, Safari Land, rather, ALS rig just like this. I think I said DeSantis earlier. Anyway, Safari Land. And uh, this one here has the uh, grip tape on there. So I do dig that as well. Next up, and I know why I said DeSantis, next up is going to be the Ruger LCP. This is the 380 pistol, 6 plus 1 capacity. And we have a DeSantis uh, pocket holster here. I really like these pocket holsters. Um, there's, you'll see some throughout the review. And only pocket holsters that I've drawn with over and over and over and over again, at least like probably 50, 60 times that have never come out with the gun do I actually carry with. So I test them pretty extensively. Um, but the LCP here, I do carry uh, from time to time. And the ammo in this one is going to be Fioki. This is their XTP bullet. And <laughs> so if you guys have ever watched any gel tests of 380, um, one thing that tends to happen with it, with like premium ammunition, is that it tends to overexpand and under, under penetrate. So you'll get like eight inches of penetration, like uh, the Federal HST is a good example of that. Uh, tends to go about eight to 10 inches of penetration because it just expands too much. Well, one thing about the XTP bullet um, is that it's a very old design and it doesn't expand really well. And in 380, in my personal opinion, that's kind of a good thing. So you just get just a touch of expansion or none and it'll penetrate 16 to 18 inches, generally speaking, out of a 380. Um, so I like that in terms of penetration. Um, in terms of uh, spare mags, let's cover that now. Really the only gun I ever carry a spare mag with is this one. And um, yeah, you know, like I said, should you carry a bigger gun? Sure, I get it all the time, but I'm always carrying a gun. Um, but the reason I carry a spare mag with this one is because the mags are so small and just easily concealable. They kind of are no bigger than a pen. Um, so, or two pens, I guess. Next up is going to be the Walther. This is the PPS M2. Again, DeSantis holster, the exact same type. Um, this one here has the True Glow sights on there. Uh, these are TF, 
X's maybe. I'll annotate it down below if you guys are going to pick them up, but I do like them. I have a full review of it. I have a full review of this gun as well. Um, excellent pistol. This is one that I didn't expect to really like as much as I do, but I love it. Um, it shoots awesome. I can shoot this gun as well as most full-size guns, and that's not the case with a lot of compact options. Um, this one here is loaded with 124 grain uh, Federal HST. You're probably going to see a, th a theme there, um, but yeah, this gun, I really, like I said, I didn't expect to like it as much as I do, but I, did, I love it. It's uh, been 100% reliable, and I don't think I've ever had anything crazy happen with it. It just works, and it works well. All right, continuing on. Uh, we do have a Smith & Wesson. This is a uh, J-frame that has the little it's sort of bobbed hammer that you can use in single action should you need to do so. It's a 638. I think this is a dash three. Uh, and this one here, what are we using? I think we're using, yep, Federal HST, uh, the 38 Special Plus P round. It's excellent. I have a gel test on it. In my opinion, it's, it, ugh, it's the best uh, 38 Special round for small revolvers. And uh, I stand by that. So I carry this one actually pretty often as well. This is probably towards the top of the guns that I carry. Um, and again, yeah, do you want more gun? Yep. But you know, you know, it's better than not having a gun, having a gun. So uh, this one here carried in a Galco uh, pocket holster. Um, this here is a, who makes this? Sorry, I don't know who makes this, but this is the inside the waistband holster. And one thing I like about it, if I can remember who makes it, is that it has a leather lining on there. And I don't care about messing my guns up at all. But one thing I like about that is it provides like a really good kind of like snug retention to it. And this is for a Glock 26. And we'll move on to that. This is a Glock 26 Gen 3. Gun I carry a lot. This one here is in a Smoky Mountain concealment holster with the belt loops that lock in. I like these because they're very easy to put on and obviously they're very good retention in that regard. So this again, Gen 3 Glock 26, 10 round mag, Federal HST 124 grain. I don't like plus P ammo for defense. Um, again, personal uh, opinion, I suppose, but it's, it, I don't like it. You get less penetration and you get more recoil. I don't want either of those. Um, so what you get here, we have our, again, exact same sights as the uh, Walther has or the True Glows, the TFXs, I think. I should probably know what those are. I don't know. But they're the new ones that have the protective fiber optics and then the white ring around the front. Um, I really like them. They work great in the day. They work great at night. Um, they're super awesome sights. There's tons of good sights. You guys are going to see some others uh, as we go along, but Glock 23. Uh, I'd rather Glock 26, Gen 3, excellent firearm. Carry that one a good bit. Uh, this here, we have again another pocket uh, gun that I do use. This one here has the uh, um, Trichicon HD sights. I like the HD sights a lot. Um, for concealed carry though, I only use them on pocket guns simply because they do kind of poke at my hip if I use them on the waistband. But Glock 42 again, XTP bullets just like before. Um, I believe that's Fioki. And again, we have a Pro 460 Galco holster. Um, the thing about these Galco holsters, like this one as well, that I really like is this hook right here. So in pretty much any type of pants or shorts that you're wearing, it will hook and not come out. And that happens reliably, which I do like as well. Next gun up is this one here is a Ruger LCR. I need to do a video on this one day, but I really like this gun. This here has a Spear Gold Dot 38 Special, not plus P ammo in there. That's hard ammo to get. I don't think it's really available anymore. Uh, they used to sell it, but um, I don't really see it out there anymore. But it's a good performer as well in terms of penetration, which is what you really need to be focused on, in my opinion, if you're going to carry a 38 Special gun. Um, and we have a XS Big Dot sight there on the front. Love it. Love it, love it. Uh, this one, sometimes I pocket carry. And I should also mention it has the uh, Hogue Piranha grip on there, which I really like as well. But I tend to carry this one here, and this, I believe this is Cardini uh, holster. And I almost never carry appendix. Let's talk about that, I suppose. But if I carry appendix, it's this right here. Uh, for some reason, it's just very comfortable with me. It has that high uh, strap here on the back with the leather. Um, for me, it fits me well and my body type in terms of carrying appendix. And when I sit, because it's so short, it doesn't poke me. Like, I, again, I almost never carry appendix. And if I do, this is really the only one that I can think of that I ever do. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. And again, it just depends what I'm wearing and what I'm doing that day as to how I carry and what I carry. All right, we have that moving along. Uh, we'll go here. All right, so this one's probably gonna surprise some people, uh, although it might not surprise others. So this is a Glock 19 Gen 4. Again, true ghost sights, it's kind of a theme there, and that's not intentional. I like other sights, I don't really know why. It just so happens that there seems to be a lot of true gold here on the table. Um, but this one has the uh, critical defense 135 grain standard pressure Hornady ammo in there. I prefer the HSTs or the gold dots personally. However, 
It just happened that when I was testing this gun uh, for concealed carry and I was running a bunch of uh, defensive ammo through it, that I had the critical defense with me. So that's what I went with. It's an acceptable round in my opinion. There's no, nothing wrong with it. I have gel tests on it as well. And this is in a crossbreed holster. This is one of their new rigs. And I should kind of point that out, I guess. Uh, one thing you're gonna see as kind of a theme is that if there's a double stack gun that I carry, usually it's going to be in a hybrid holster. The same is gonna be true here with this uh, uh, FN. Now that's 26, kind of an exception. But the reason I say that is, is comfort. For me, again, because I always carry a gun, comfortable, comfortable, being comfortable rather uh, makes a difference. So uh, having a hybrid holster for me, they're just much more comfortable. I tend to carry inside the waistband at the um, at the three or four, well, four o'clock position rather. Um, so for me, I just like the way it actually you know contours to your body a little bit better. And then the Kydex outside gives you the op option to, or rather, ability to reholster better than you can with leather. Uh, that's definitely a downside of leather is that it kind of shrinks down when you draw. Um, but I like this here, it allows very easy uh, access to get a full grip on the gun because you can see here nothing's blocked. Uh, some hybrid holsters have that, this does not. It's a good rig. Um, one thing I also recommend is whenever you get any kind of holster that has screws in it, which a lot of these have, anytime you get a holster that has screws in it in any way, um, Loctite them. Blue or purple is fine, you don't need red, but Loctite them. They will come loose over time. Uh, again, I always carry a gun, so, and I have since I was, shoot, 18. So, 19, 19. So, um, yeah, definitely Loctite those down because they will come loose. It happens, trust me. Uh, but yeah, Gen 4 Glock 19, the reason I said it's kind of ironic is uh, the reason this channel started, for those that don't know, is because I, I had the gun before, two guns before this, uh, the Gen 4 Glock 19 is what I bought for my wife um, when we first started dating for her to carry, and the thing wouldn't work. Uh, this, again, like I said, is the third Gen 4 Glock 19 because I had to go back to the factory over and over again, and uh, that's the reason I started the channel, which is basically because I wanted to rant about a Gen 4 Glock 19 that wouldn't work. It ended up being two of them, and then this is the third one. I think this is a... Um, 2017 production and this gun's had zero malfunctions of any kind in any way um, awesome gun it works just like the glock 19 should have worked when i bought it originally and the first two of course didn't um, but it is what it is all right next up is going to be this little rig right here it's an alien gear holster uh, again hybrid style i really like the hybrid this one has like a neoprene type of fabric to it, it feels like a wetsuit if you guys have ever felt that. And I like that, particularly when it's really hot out as opposed to the leather. Um, it's just more comfortable. And it, I mean, this one, you can see it's all marred up and nicked up because I use it a lot, um, but it's comfortable. And again, kind of has that hybrid design. Everything's locked down, I can assure you. And this is the uh, FNS 9C. Really like the gun, it's an excellent gun. Again, 124 grain, Federal HST, non plus P, 10 rounds you get there in the magazine. The sights on this one are, I believe, yes they are, Trigicon. Trigicon sights with a nice ledge there on them to you know, run it one-handed should you need to do so. But this pistol, kind of like the PPS, I didn't expect to like as much as I do, but I love it. Uh, it's awesome, it shoots Great, it's got a decent trigger for a defensive gun. And uh, I would love to see like uh, the new 509 come out in a concealed carry model. I would definitely dig it. Um, but we'll get to that here in just a second actually. Uh, so that's that. Uh, again, here we have a Glock 43. This one I do carry inside the waistband sometimes in this holster. And this holster is made by, I believe it's Gearhead Works. I will annotate it down below. Um, but Glock 43, we have excess sights on there, as you guys can see, front and rear. Uh, big dot tritium only. Uh, for the excess sights for defensive use, I like a tritium only um, for standard excess. I realize they make a ton of different ones now, but I like the, just the front sight index uh, at low light. I do dig it. Again, uh, we have Federal 124 grain HST ammo in there. So those are the guns that I carry. We'll get into when and why a little bit more here in just a second. Current lights that I'm carrying, these change obviously much more than the guns that I carry. But currently we're carrying a, a Surefire E2D LED Defender. Uh, this light is awesome in just about every way. Uh, there will be a full review of it, but it's got tons of output. I personally like the crenellated bezel in case you have to whack somebody with it and uh, take their DNA with you. Um, you can do that. Um, really bright, very good for as soon as you draw it out of your pocket, it's very ergonomic to activate. And um, you'll notice there that I don't carry currently any guns with uh, weapon lights on them. I have in the past, I probably will going forward, but currently I don't. Um, so I'm, I'm generally carrying a light. I say generally, I, I would say 
95% of the time I'm carrying a light as well. Um, sometimes if I'm going to the grocery store at 11 a.m., I don't carry a light, um, just kind of how it is. Um, but this one's awesome. The one downside of it, which will be in the review, is that it can tear up fabric if you guys are wearing like normal pants, but I don't, I kind of wear cargo pants that are like true specs or vertex or whatever pretty much all the time. So uh, I don't really have that problem, but I get that people do. Uh, the other one that I carry, well, a couple more that I carry a lot is this little guy here. It's a Streamlight MicroStream USB 250 lumen, the Coyote one. Uh, these things are an awesome value. Um, this one I have to sort of hide because my wife has taken all these. I used to have four of them <laughs> and uh, she's taken all of them. So this one I hide away. But it's great. Super, super small USB rechargeable. Full review on the channel already. Um, then another stream light that I use here is the Protac 1LAA. This one here can take a number of different batteries. So it, AA obviously, AAA I think in a pinch, and then a CR123A as well. Great output. Uh, it's very light. It's not expensive at all. It can double as a weapon light. I actually have a black one as well that I use as a weapon light. You guys have probably seen it in several reviews here on the channel already. Not a full review done on this light yet, but I will carry it all the time. The reason a lot of these lights don't have reviews, guys, is because um, I'm, I carry lights to test them as part of the review, so it tends to be an ongoing process. This one here is the jam. Uh, this is going to be um, one of the, the lights I highly, highly recommend when I, when I do the review. It's not expected. It's this little Surefire option here, and its design is, is genius. It's got this little pocket clip so you can wear it. It kind of looks like you're carrying a knife if nobody knew any better. And um, it's USB rechargeable as well. It's got diff different controls. You can control the output high, low, medium. It always comes on high, which I like. I preach that in uh, all my light, defensive light type of uh, videos. And then if you want to, the back button here will always give you that high output. And it will illuminate pretty much anything you want. It's super lightweight. It's, you don't even know it's there. It's an awesome light. So when and why do I carry certain guns? Um, so I, rather probably what are the most common guns I actually carry? Let's, let's get to that. So I carry this a lot, the uh, FN9C, carry that a lot. Carry the Glock 43 a decent amount. Carry the Ruger a good bit, the LCP. Carry the, um, the J-Frame here, not as much. I carry the PPS a lot uh, during the summer if I'm wearing like, cargo shorts or something like that. This is probably what I'm gonna be carrying, uh, the PPS. It's awesome for that. Um, so those would probably be the ones I carry the most of all of them. Um, and again, it just comes down to what I'm wearing because I don't dress around, I don't dress around the gun, like I said. Um, I know some people do, and some people say you need to have at least 10 rounds and a spare mag and all that stuff at all times. That's great. If you subscribe to that, bravo, good on you, fine sir. Um, <laughs> at the, and you know, when I was younger, I should point that out too. I said I've been carrying since I was 19, that's true. They, when I was younger, I religiously carried double stack mags everywhere I went, and I dressed around the gun, and you just wouldn't have seen me without one. Um, however, as I've gotten older, I've back injuries, all kinds of other crap, and uh, I just don't do it anymore. Um, it is what it is. Uh, are there times that if I were to get in a confrontation, I would wish I had more rounds or an extra mag or all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. But the first thing you need to win a gunfight is a gun. Um, so. Uh, I always have one on me, like we said, so that's the best starting point. And um, any of these guns, carrying them is better than not carrying a gun, in my opinion. So that's that. I think we pretty much covered everything. I'm sure this was a long, rambly video. I apologize for that, but you guys have begged me for this video for years, so that is it. Oh, I should also point out, what are we planning on changing? This gun here is probably going to go away. Uh, the Glock 19, I don't carry it much. I do like the, the holster, but the reason it's probably going to go away is I shoot the 19X and the Glock 45 way better. Um, I do. I just shoot them so freaking well, and I don't know why. I don't know what the heck the magic secret sauce is to having a mullet Glock and shooting it great, but for me, that's how it is. Um, I mean, I shoot the Glock 19 pretty well, but I shoot those guns. I mean, as well, like a 1911, like a custom 1911. So uh, those will probably, one of those two, if I was to do this in 2019, will probably be in this rig. Um, I also have LCP2 that's going through testing. That may make it there. Um, it's got a ways to go in terms of rounds of proving itself. And FN, a 509, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, the 509 may get into the concealed carry rotation. Uh, if they came out with a, a smaller one, I would definitely give it consideration, but I like the 509 as well a ton. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think they're going to stay the same for a while. Um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully we answered the questions, why I carry what I carry. 
uh, all the details and all that stuff. Uh, there should be links down below to any of the stuff that we can link to uh, in the video, so you guys can pick it up if you choose to do so. If you have any questions, by all means, post down below in the comments section like always, guys. If you aren't following me over on Facebook, over there is where I put up a bunch of uh, good deals all the time, and also I reply to every message I get over there. I get about 2,000 uh, messages a day. I reply to every one of them. So uh, if you want an answer from me, um, that's the place to hit me up for sure. Um, you can also, again, comment section, full 30, other places to find me as well. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you think any of this stuff is wrong or stupid or terrible, by all means, let me know down below. Just try to keep it cordial. And I see, hope to see, rather, all of you in the next video. Clock 43 out here with some uh, Trugo TFXs. And uh, just a little reminder, guys, train with your carry guns. They're not as fun to shoot, I know, but it's important because of that.